Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at thehellblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellow One Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellow since you get 18% off. We out. All right, appreciate everybody for checking in. Tia Fima Lopez, Mikey Garcia, and Devin Haney all makes they, uh, make their picks for um, Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia. Let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And I believe, uh, let's start off with Devin. Um, Devin basically said if Ryan Garcia win the fight, it'll look bad if Ryan Garcia don't shoot the fade with him. It'll look like he ducked or if he ran up to 140. And that he looked forward to fighting the winner, Luke and Ryan Garcia. And he said that he expects Ryan Garcia to get the victory over Chicken Noodle Soup Luke Campbell. Um, he also says you have to point out that Luke also came off a loss. So I don't know if he's trying to diminish what Ryan is doing. Or he's trying to point out the obvious, you know what I'm saying? But he was a guy that was trying to pursue a Luke Campbell fight. And I don't know exactly, you know, why they ordered Ryan Garcia. Maybe because Fortuna couldn't get his shot. And they said, well, Ryan, well, uh, Luke, you're not going to get your shot. So he went with uh, Ryan Garcia. And obviously he has some, probably some alternative uh, agendas because Ryan brings him a bigger payday. All right. Luke Campbell don't bring him the notoriety to payday. And they want Ryan and Devin uh, to fight because that's a good lucrative fight for the zone. But um, like I said today, I think that fight is way too premature to make. But if they want to make it, I'm not knocking it. It's a, it's, a, it's a good fight for the fans. But I still don't think fighting on the zone has really boosted their notoriety to the point where it's going to break records over at the zone. But um, they both want it. They want to settle a grudge uh, in amateurs. And they can go on to fight several times in their career and several different weight classes. But it's very, very interesting if Ryan Garcia goes out there and, you know, destroys Luke Campbell, then that fight, I think, it boosts up. But I think everything under the banner of the zone is really hurting it because the zone, they promotional companies don't know how to promote. They're not running commercials. They Eddie Hearn is trying to think outside the box, you know, doing IG interviews with different fighters, and they just don't know how to promote boxing. I don't think anybody knows how to promote boxing in the 21st century. I mean, the radio, a lot of people don't listen to the radio. I mean, YouTube is a good place to do so, but... It's hard, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's hard. I mean, you can go back to basics and, you know, do press conferences and, you know, like when Riddick Bo pieced old boy up. I mean, but, you know, they just don't know how to market, you know what I'm saying, to the casual fans. The hardcore fans going to find it. You could put the cheese of a fight, you know, you could put it in, you could put it, you know, in the Where's Waldo book and we going to find it because we love boxing, the hardcore fans. So, um, but in my opinion, it's just they not, they, they doing the worst job promoting boxing. You know, it's kind of like when Beyonce do a pop-up album. You know, most casual fans, I don't even know this fight come on tonight. So, they got to find a better way to market and promote boxing in 21st century. But you got all these dudes with Harvard degrees, and they've been in business for a long time. And, you know, they still don't know how to promote the sport. So, that's very, very unfortunate. But I'm down for Devin and Ryan at this point. I'm down for any top-tier fight. Um, you know, but he said he think Ryan will win. He think Ryan got too much dog. And he picked Ryan Garcia to get the win, all right? So then Tia from Lopez said, I sparred with Luke Campbell. And I guess it got story got out that Luke beat him down in camp. And he said that that wasn't true. And, you know, those rumors wasn't accurate. And, um, you, know, for whatever re you know, for whatever reason, I didn't hear that that, that rumor. But they did spar. There's our pictures of them out there, you know, um, pick, taking pictures, you know, after sparring or whatever. But he said he picked Ryan Garcia, too, to beat Luke Campbell. So he been in the ring with Luke Campbell, and, you know, he picked him too, you know, and he he been very critical about Ryan Garcia, so that's 2-0 and o for, you know, you know, you got, you know, dude from New York, from he's Honduras, and then you got Devin Haney, a black guy from the Bay Area, picking Ryan to get the job done, and they've been very critical, they had their beefs, and they back and forth from Ryan Garcia, so that just lets you know what people think, what they think of Luke Campbell as a fighter, you know, he been in there with Luke Campbell, you know, Luke is big and strong, he can thump a little bit, but once again, Luke is very, very basic. But people forget Luke Campbell, you know, he is coming off a loss. But I think he gave Loma a better run than his money than people anticipated. So that's something also to look look at, man. So uh, Tio also picked him to get the job done. Um, you know, Mikey Garcia went on. He gave his opinion. You know, Mikey is pro-Mexican everything. You could say Ryan versus Godzilla, he's going to pick Ryan Garcia. He picked Ryan to get the job done. Um 
You know, so everybody picking Ryan, you know. And a lot of the fans are split on this. A lot of fans think it's 50-50. A lot of fans didn't think Ryan Garcia the real deal. They think Luke Campbell going to beat him. But it's all, I mean, when you listen to the fighters, and it's not that the fighters don't know what they're talking about. You know, when you listen to the fighters, they also have alternative agendas. Some do. Some fighters and trainers might not like this guy. You know, some of them might not want to get go against the grain of a particular guy because they actually like him. Um, so it's very, very difficult to figure out, you know, you know what they are trying to pretend. It's not that they don't know how to break the fight down. X and O's. You meet a lot of trainers. When you ask them, hey man, what you think about? I don't know. Um, you know what you think about? You know. Callum Smith, and they, oh, I never, never see him fight, but Canelo should beat him. You know what I'm saying? You know they, they, it's hard, it's hard to tell, you know who got a, who got an alternative agenda, who got a beef, who know who they talking about. To be honest, I met a lot of people, you know, dudes that fight in the amateurs. I ran into them and talked to them, and I'm, I'm seeing quite a few fighters who don't follow boxing. If they ain't fighting, they ain't watching it. So, it's to the point where. You talking about the, the great state of boxing, where this, where where is boxing at? You got a lot of people within the boxing fear who don't even watch the sport. They don't care what's going on in the sport. You know what I mean? Boxers when, once they fight or train in the gym and they don't even turn on the TV. Al Heyman got to ask them to be at these fights. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you, a lot of these dudes don't be wanting to go to these fights. They go to the big fights like Wilder Fury. So a lot of these fighters don't even watch boxing. That's the crazy thing about it. When a TV on, a lot of these dudes don't care. So how can you ask, you know, 350 million Americans to watch the sport of boxing when your own people that's in the sport of boxing don't watch it? That's nuts. Truly, man. But, you know, so it's always hard. It's always nice to make your own decision on, on these picks. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, it's always nice to break down the film, kind of look at what they do. But, you know, I, I'm pulling for Ryan personally. Not sure he's going to win. I got to break down the film. But I told people that Luke may give uh, Loma a run for his money more than he did. But a lot, of, but they came up with the wrong game plan. You know what I'm saying? And when you come up with the wrong game plan, you try to sit in the box with Loma, that's not how you get the job done. You got to press him. You got to bully him and push him back. So as far as my little small synopsis of this fight, and I'm not sure when it's going to fall, um... You know, for Luke, it's just about, you know, you know, um, slipping that left hook. And Ryan throws a natural left hook. He whips it, and it carries a lot of power, power. but it, it just seems that um, he telegraphs it some. So, if you're able to watch off to the left hook, I, to, I, would, I would work Ryan Garcia body early on. He likes to do a lot of running. That's running. When he's trying to roll out that Ramir Khan style amateur roll out, he like to run. You know what I'm saying? And what I would do is I would touch his body early on. I said this before. Jab him to the solar plex, to the stomach. I would just touch him, touch him to the body so them air come out the tires. He ain't never been a hard 12. You know what I'm saying? I would just continue to work the body. But Luke Campbell going to sit there. He going to try to box this kid. You know what I'm saying? He going to try to sit in the uh, outside or he going to try to sit in the pocket and outbox Ryan Garcia. Garcia going gonna, gonna, gonna to dance around the ring. Luke going to follow him. And it's going to be if Luke can keep, cut the ring off and he can, you know, look out for Ryan left hook and if he able to deliver, you know, deliver some punishment, you know. But I anticipate that it'll be a good fight. I got to watch the film exactly to know how it's going to go. But, you know, Ryan just be Ryan. I would tell Ryan to be aggressive. Um, we know if you throw punches at Luke Campbell, he's going to cover up. He's not going to slip and make too many boxing moves. So we've seen that with Loma, you know. All he got to do is keep punching, but he got to pace himself. But, you know, him and Shane McGuigan should work on the body attack and, and, and just continue to utilize the jab and left hook to the body to systematically break Ryan down. But I think everybody going to be pulling for Ryan because it's better for the division. You know, even if T.O. don't fight Ryan at 35 or, you know, Devin, you know, don't fight Ryan at 35 for whatever reason because the winner is supposed to get Ryan, it's better because you can see him at 40. You can see him at 47. Ryan bring the most money. Uh, as far the most money potential down there at the lower weight classes, and also there's a Javante Tank Davis fight, you know, laying, laying on the line for um, it's a you know Javante Tank Davis fight laying on the line, you know, for you know you know uh, Ryan Garcia next. So maybe Ryan doesn't take on Devin Haney 
he goes to uh, Javante Tank Davis route. You know, Davis will have a build at 30 if he beat Leo Santa Cruz. Will Ryan go down to 30 and fight Tank for the real WBA? Will he stay at 35 and fight Tank for the fake WBA? Will it be for the real WBA versus Tank because the winner of Tiafima Lopez, excuse me, Loma, Loma win, he go down. Tiafima Lopez lose, he go up. He, he vacate the belts. So, you know, there is a chance that Ryan can fight Loma. I mean, Ryan can fight, you know, Tank, excuse me, and not fight Devin Haney. Now, would people consider that a duck? No. If he don't fight Devin and he fight Tank, I mean, and he fight Tank on what, the zone pay-per-view they're talking about or PBC pay-per-view, and that's what they want to do next, then Devin Haney going to be on the outside looking in. He's going to take on, if he stay alive, he's going to have to take on the winner of Lenares Fortuna. He already ducked Fortuna. He already ducked Lenares. So Ryan could not fight Devin Haney after this and fight, you know, Tank and make a bigger fight. Ryan and Tank right now a bigger fight than, you know, you know, uh, Ryan and Devin. We know Devin and Ryan won't, uh, Devin and Tank won't fight according to Floyd. So that's the plan. Ryan's plan is not to fight Devin Haney. Now maybe Ryan fight Tank and he maybe can beat Tank and Luke Campbell. Then he turn around and then he fight, uh, you know, come back and fight Devin Haney at some point. But I, I think Devin Haney not going to have an opponent that he won't for a very long time. And another funny thing about that interview he did before I get off, he was him and I, I guess that was Ben Thompson. I'm not sure who was doing the interview for Fight Hype. They was talking about um, his portion of it. They was talking about, um, you know, uh, trainers not, you know, these trainers um, not being educated and they just throwing a tile over they, uh, over they, uh, over they over they uh, shoulder and calling themselves a trainer, watching YouTube videos and trying to fake the shoulder roll and all of that. And he was just talking about they was just talking about fake trainers and boxing and, bo and trainers not being real and the old trainers kind of you know dying on and not really being able to pass the game down like Eddie Fudge. And you know one of the dudes on Fight Hype in the comment section, he he thought exactly what I thought, and I was like, his daddy one of those guys. Use Floyd Mayweather Senior. Use Mike McCallum. You know what I'm saying. And he act like he the man in the corner, man. I'm like, you talking about your daddy? You know what I'm saying? So a lot of these these dudes out here that 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 claim to be coaches, you know. But you know, Virtual Hunter, another guy. Virtual Hunter, good good coach, you know, in some people's opinion. But it's really the dude behind Virtual Hunter that helps Virtual Hunter, you know, get to where he at. John David Jackson is a front man. Don Turner, he got the game. So a lot behind a lot of these young coaches, there's OG coaches. That passed the game and helped them out. They like liaisons that's behind them, um, behind them that don't want all the credit. So I was just thinking, like, yeah, Devin Haney, daddy, is one of those dudes that, uh, you know, I just think that don't know much about the sport of boxing, but he act like he do. I'm not saying he's not solid, you know what I'm saying? He he got a son where he at. Um, use Floyd and use Mike McCullum for his assistance. They kind of like his, Don, they kind of like Don Turner to John David Jackson, but, you know, that's just my kind of my little opinion on that, man. But, Hey, it's working. You know, keep your daddy in the corner. Uh, I don't know if he's going to train with Florida or not, but I don't, I don't anticipate Devin getting Ryan Garcia, Tiafim Lopez, or Loma for a long time or any type of fights like that for a while. But, hey, that's just my opinion on it. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you got business questions, require response, ship video requests, keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel, cash out, PayPal, description. Best way to donate is to share, share the video. One time for the one time we know.